Ad Astra. Five, the harness stakes into his shoulder. Mission Control keeps a stream of chatter in his ear, but Gagarin can hardly hear them over his pounding heart. The rocket shudders around him. Four, humanity has always been entranced by the stars. Thousands of years of progress, shepherds gazing on lonely nights, astronomers tracing intricate charts, kings standing in gilded observatories, has come down to a single man, a single cockpit, a single hope. Three, this is how it feels to have the world watching. Whatever happens here will determine the future of space travel. Here's where humanity decides whether they will ascend to the stars or remain forever earthbound. Kagarin thinks there may be a lesson to this, something about hubris and Icarus and flying too close to the sun. Oh well, the Soviet Union gave up religion for a reason. Two, fire, destruction, and blood. He had seen the trip failed test casts and probe midair before they plunged into the sea. Will it hurt the same happens to him, or will he become dust before his body can register the pain? 1. A force hauls him up at the same time a weight presses down on his chest. The rocket shakes so hard he fears it will fall to pieces. The tinny voices are gone, joined, drowned out by the deafening roar of the engines. An eternity passes before two muffled explosions come from the craft. A solemn quiet descends, broken only by the soft whirring of cooling fans. The earth gleams before him, gray white clouds swirling above great blue seas, and lights winking from the land. The garden has left behind all he knows. Now he's alone above the world, drifting among the stars.